Hello, I'm Greg Thompson. This is Neefal East on Footy Talk and there's only two rounds to go until the finals. Queanbeyan is still on top and Ainsley, the reigning premiers, were there back in a big way. Let's take a look at all the action, the highlights from round 19. The Battle of Sydney with the UWS Giants and the Sydney Swans Reserves going head to head. And despite a good start by the Giants, the Red V kicked clear in the third quarter. Mitch Morton leading the way with five. The Giants 9-10-64, the Swans Reserves 18-18-126. In a cross-conference game, the Sydney Hills Eagles return to form against Mount Gravatta Bruce Purse and Matt Edwards strong up forward with six. Callan Young also chipped in on the goal scorers list. The Sydney Hills Eagles getting up 17-11-113 to Mount Gravatt 8-13-61. A 50 to 18 quarter time lead from the Belconnen Magpies. Thought as though they were going to go all the way with it, but Tuggeranong fought back strongly up forward. Well, goal sneak Matt Ghirardello got four, but for the home side, Shane Harris and Jordan Harper led the way with six between them. Belconnen sneaking home 15 13 103, Tuggeranong 14 7 91. A six-goal haul by veteran James Kavanagh steered the Queanbeyan Tigers to a strong win over Sydney Uni. Some glimpses of brilliance by Adam Campbell for the home side. He bagged three, but Sydney Uni couldn't keep up. 14-6-90 to the Tigers, 26-13, 169. And despite a solid half of footy by the Eastlake Demons, they ran out of legs against the Ainsley Football Club at Marnica Oval. Their losing streak continuing, Ben Maiden and Sam Mardling got two each, along with Tim Gray in his return for Eastlake. The Tricolours once again, Nick Payne and Ken McGregor leading the way with four goals each. Eastlake 13-3-81, Ainsley 14-8-92. Well, things are certainly starting to get exciting as we head into the finals. Joining us this week on Eiffel Eastern Footy Talk is a former Queanbeyan Tigers Supremo. You're huge down in Queanbeyan now with Actu AGL, Paul Walsh. Welcome to the program, mate. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Very nice to have you on board, mate. Let's talk about Queanbeyan. Another week, another win. It certainly is. Uh, it's uh, amazing the transformation of the Tigers this year after the disappointment of 2011 to come back and bounce back like they have this year, sitting on top of the ladder. Had some great wins. Um, obviously, a long way to go yet. Yeah. Um, still got a number of games left in the remainder of the season before yeah. the finals. But, uh, you know, things are looking good. Tell us about your involvement with the club. Oh, look, my involvement goes back probably as a junior, actually. Uh, I first put on the boots with the Queen Bean under rates in 1968, oh, it was. You just aged yourself there, yeah, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and then I came back to the club. I, I had a, a bit of a career with Tuggeranong. Yeah. in the early to mid 80s and then uh, went across to Queanbeyan in 1988 um, for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, my boss at the time was Brian Quaid. He was the coach. Yes, so it Big was, Brian. It was important for me to, uh, from a job's Keep point of view. Keep him happy. That's yeah. right. And the second part was my father played for Queanbeyan okay. back in the 60s. So I always wanted to go back there and play uh, where my father played. So I had an association there and, and played right through till about uh, 96. Uh, but also had five years of coaching the Colts there, which yeah. was uh, absolutely tremendous to coach the, the Colts. And then had two years as assistant first grade coach uh, to James Dorr in 98 and 99 and was fortunate enough to be uh, a part of two winning premierships. So I've had a great association with the club and uh, obviously very dear to my heart. And yeah. um, I only live about uh, probably... Uh, Half a k away from the club, so brilliant. Can't like, stay away from it, can no, you, Paul? No, get away, get a lot, get down to the local games, which is great. Yeah, that is a fantastic, uh, you know, career that you've had for Queanbeyan. I think Supremo was an understatement. Well, now off the field with uh, Actu AGL, fantastic supporters of the NEFL. Tell us about that. I mean, it is great to have, you know, a local company uh, really supporting local footy. Yeah, look, Actu AGL is involved in many sports, but we certainly uh, value our involvement. Uh, with the AFL, it goes back to uh, about, I think about 2000, we were involved uh, with AFL here in Canberra and more recently with the, with the, the NEFL and uh, also involved with a number of uh, local clubs both uh, here in the ACT and regionally as well. We're, we're a sponsor of the Yasroos and the Golden Swans yeah. and we see how important they are. You know, look, footy's a great game, AFL's a great game and uh, I think to support the clubs and to support the league is something that Actu AGL is very proud of. And over 12 years. That's over, remarkable, mate. Over 12 years. We also have had an association with the Kangaroos when they played their games here in Canberra, the Sydney Swans when they played their games uh, in Canberra, and now with the GWS Giants. So, uh, 
you know, it, what, what's good for Canberra, Actual AGL will be a part of. Absolutely, and of course the Giants are here in round 21 of the AFL, so it's going to be huge. And of course the UWS Giants will take on Bill Connard in the curtain raiser. Well, there was plenty of stars at the Neefal breakfast earlier this week, and Neefal was there to check it all out with our very popular media call. Yeah, look, we're hoping to get a win in the next uh, two weeks, uh, or well, one week for us, but um, we're looking at the lower grades as well. Um, try and go out on a high. We're in a bit of a rebuilding phase at the moment at the club. Um, we've got the new coach, obviously, in Mark Dragosevic. Um, we've got a lot of plans happening off the field. So it's a few positives to take from this season, but uh, on-field success hasn't been one of those. But we're, we're building towards a rosy future. Yeah, fantastic to finish off the season like that. I guess uh, we might not be playing finals, but I think uh, the last six weeks or eight weeks of the season has definitely shown massive improvement. And we're only narrowly losing games prior to that. So... Uh, it's been fantastic. Lowe's coming on board for another year. Um, crucial signings of a couple of our key recruits uh, that are sticking around for next year is going to be great and we'll top up with a couple more and uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to next year, new ground. Uh, it's all going to be good. Yeah, it's, um, it, is, it is probably lucky that we got out of the blocks pretty early and got some wins on the board. You know, the old cliche of uh, shopping early was uh, one thing we, we talk about during the game, but to do it during the season too gives you a bit of an advantage towards the end of the season. So. You know, I think we're still a chance to finish anywhere from third to fifth. So finals that we're going to play, um, it depends how we go running into it. And, uh, you know, we keep sort of emphasising the strengths that we're, we're doing right. Um, and hopefully we can just get some consistency in doing that through four quarters and then we're a chance to knock off some of the better sides. So. We have, yeah. We had a little bit of a slump there, I suppose, with a, a few uh, losses, three in a row, um, which I guess woke us up a little bit and just... Uh, gave us an opportunity to refocus and I think we did that really well. A couple of good weeks, um, two cross-conference wins. I think it's got us back on track. Boys are playing very good footy. Look, uh, you know, we've we talked about taking it one game at a time and this week is, you know, if we, if we don't win this week, we could lose that top spot. Um, you know, our aim is obviously to win a, win a premiership. Um, if you look back on the years, you probably don't even remember who won a money premiership. So obviously that's our goal, but it's more of a goal to obviously set us up for finals um, to get that top spot. So this week against Eastlake, it's not going to be an easy game for us. I know we've beaten them both times this year, but um, you know they're always tough to come up against. And uh, you know we're really just focusing on this week. I'm not worried about what happened the week after or all the week off. Hey guys, well we are back at the SCG uh, for Footy Talk this week where I'm joined by Sydney Swans midfielder Dylan McNeil who's going to talk to us about the success of the Swans reserves so far this season. Dylan, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, now you guys had another big win on the weekend over the Giants. Um, you were losing at the quarter break and the halftime break. Uh, what came together for you guys in the second half? Well, GWS had a really strong side in on the weekend, had a lot of listed players, so we knew it was going to be a tough challenge. Their coaches had also talked it up as a big game for them because they're not going to play finals. That was They were taking that as their grand final for the year, so we had to come out firing. I think we are just a little bit off with our skills in the first half, and uh, once we got that back on track in the second half, we were, we were good to go. Cool. And um, so who, you've had a few new additions into the Swans reserves uh, this season. Who's been some key standout players for you guys? Well, obviously, Jared Moore, he's probably our captain. Um, he's actually going for his triple Mulroney medalist in the competition. Um, and he's probably a raging favourite, as he told me just before. So I think he's um, definitely one of our key players. Also, Mitch Morton, this is the first year at, his at this club and he's leading the goal kicking. And also, probably of the new guys that have come in, Harry Cunningham is playing well. Cool. And um, so it's not just you guys who are obviously having a, a good time this season. The Swans seniors are doing very well. How's the feeling around the club with uh, everyone going into finals time? Obviously everyone's pretty enthusiastic. The uh, seniors are on top of the AFL ladder and we're second, uh, having already beaten the first place side, Queanbeyan. And so it's a pretty good feeling at the moment. Um, but we've still got a few games to go in the year, so we're just concentrating on that before we sort of look to finals. Cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dylan, and uh, good luck against uh, Hills Eagles this weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Well, here we are at the Neefal Eastern Business Breakfast, where we have spoken to many people, including the ACT Sports Minister and the New South Wales ACT AFL boss, Tom Harley. Yeah, look, it is. It's, uh, I think it's been really important that uh, what, what's been occurring you know, below the, 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 the top level stuff that uh, has got most of the media, uh, obviously you know, the, the giants uh, coming into the city, but it's what's been occurring in the Neefal that uh, I think has been really important for the development of the game. 
uh, the, the level of participation and activity uh, in the schools and in the community is, uh, is growing significantly and that's, uh, I think that's been really positive outcome uh, for the code but, but also just for community participation and, and a couple of the projects that uh, talked about this morning that ha have uh, are involved a partnership between the ACT government, uh, uh, the footy clubs but then also the, the broader community uh, in fundraising and, uh, and community activity towards uh, you know, developing that new infrastructure whether it's at Kipax uh, down in the Tuggeranong Town Centre or at Marnica Oval. It's, uh, it's been really encouraging to see just how many people have uh, got behind it and, and, and done some hard work to, uh, to get a really good outcome for the community. The NEFA plays a really pivotal role in the talent development and the clubs are, have got the responsibility to, to foster and develop young talent. So we've got the three players playing in the AFL at the moment and, and they've really been only three in the past ten years. So it has been a cold spot, if you like, Canberra for talent at the very elite level. Um, but in saying that, we haven't had the pathway that we've got now. So it is incumbent on the clubs to provide the right development, get the right people in, in place to, uh, to teach the uh, kids the right way to play and then I'm sure that we'll get a spike in the talented players coming through Canberra. The new Needful iPhone app is now available. Get your hands on all the scores, teams, fixtures, ladders and player profiles each and every week. To get the app, simply SMS Needful app to 19 -33 -33. <laughs> Round 20 of the Eastern Conference looks like this. Game 1 on the Gold Coast. The Suns and UWS Giants at Metricon Stadium, 12.30 Saturday. Paul, who do you like? Uh, the Giants. Mark Armstrong's coaching them this, up there this weekend, so definitely the Giants. Oh, sure, and if Mark's coaching, yeah. don't worry about that. The other game, also in South East Queensland, Southport and Sydney Uni, 1pm on Saturday. Need to go with the local side, Sydney Uni. Brilliant, well said. Aspley and Ainsley in a cross-conference clash, 1pm Saturday, Graham Road. I think the Tricolours are hitting some form at the moment, so I think they'll be they'll win on the, over the weekend. They are doing very nicely at the moment, Ainsley. They certainly are. Do not write them off? No, wouldn't write them off at all. I think... Uh, the last couple of weeks they've been excellent with the way they've gone around out their footy. Rorke's got them firing. Oh yes, and he's fired up too. Rorke yeah. this time of year, he loves it. All right, closer to Canberra, Queanbeyan, and Eastlake, Dairy Farmers Park, 2 p.m. Saturday. Got to go for the Tigers, surprise, but look, surprise. I, I think Eastlake will be desperate. They've had uh, two losses. Uh, they need to, to win this weekend to make sure they get a, a good place within the finals. So I think Queanbeyan will be in a tough ass, but. At a dairy farmer's park, you can't go past the Tigers. Fallen off the radar a little bit, Eastlake? They have. It's been uh, probably a little bit disappointing from Berkey's point of view in coaching the side, uh, but he's a good coach and I've got no doubt that he'll have him fire him there over the weekend. Could be an upset, that one, Eastlake. All right, finally, 4pm Saturday. The Hills Eagles going head-to-head -head with the Sydney Swans at ANZ Stadium. This will be a really good game. It will be a good game, but, but I think the Swans at the moment, they're probably the, the threat. Uh, to Queanbeyan at the moment, you'd think from from uh, a form point of view, yeah. and I just think that the Swans will be too strong over the weekend. All right, that'll be a close game, no doubt about that. And of course, Bell Conan and Tuggeranong have buys in round 20, which is going to be an absolute belter. Two weeks to go until finals. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's a great time of the year, Greg. It really is. These last couple of rounds where you know teams will be jostling to where they want to be uh, in the finals, yeah. and then it all starts starts all over again for them. It's just a new ball game. Uh, come finals time, but uh, look, it's an exciting time. You can smell it in the air, mate. Oh, you can, and there's home finals up for grab as well, so the percentage and finishing in the top five is very, very important. Paul Walsh from ACTU AGL and a former Queanbeyan Tigers and Tuggeranong champion. Oh, I don't know about the champion, mate, <laughs> but certainly you can call me a player. I think I, I call myself an average footballer. I think sometimes my coaches thought I was very average some days. <laughs> Depends if you showed up. Thanks for being on the show, mate, and well done for the involvement from ACTU AGL. 12 years. Local footy, fantastic. Thanks, Greg. Good Thanks to see you, Paul. Thank you, mate. All right, we'll see you next week. Things are getting exciting. Bye for now.